Sports. We are the sports. We are Celtics. Man, oh man, is it great to be back in beautiful Atlanta, Georgia, where tonight the Braves start a very nice, happy home run. 12 of the next 14 games for Atlanta are here at beautiful SunTrust Park and tonight the New York Mets make their final appearance in the Peach State a two game series gets underway here tonight. Hi again friends with Paul Bird and Joe Simpson Chip Carey great to be back with you here at SunTrust Park where the Braves continue to be at the top of the pile in the Eastern Division race tied for first with the not Washington Nationals but looking at the all star voting guys which is right around the corner mm -hmm. the Atlanta Braves are very well represented in the balloting awesome work by Braves country starting of course with the man leading off for Atlanta Paul Ozzie Albies way to vote Atlanta fans I'm fired up and I get fired up watching this guy I have to admit I did not expect him to be this far along in the process coming up at 20 years old 21 now has been outstanding a very exciting player to watch the helmet comes off he's a blast you know what gets me Paul is the energy he brings to this ball club he's a great igniter at the top of the order but his hustle and hard work on whether even when he makes an out he's running a ball out he's playing hard and playing exceptional defense and how about Freddie Freeman Freddie Freeman is receiving more votes than anybody in the National League keep it up Braves fans to get him into the all-star game he's certainly deserving second in the National League and average leads the National League with uh, 455 average with men in scoring position he's hit in 21 out of his last 22 he has been phenomenal and I'm going to say finally to Freddie Freeman but how about Nick Markakis he has been outstanding all year long I asked him in the locker room I said Nick do you like this notoriety are you ready to go he said no I hate it I just want to win the game and I just want to go out and play but it comes with it and I'm excited about the year he's having Nick no, Markakis has for him certainly beg your pardon Joe Nick Markakis more hits than any active player never to have made an all-star team and here is the National League all-star team up to the moment and uh, of course you can vote online at braves.com slash vote the all-star game in Washington D.C. presented of course by Fox from our nation's capital. So Atlanta taking on the woebegone New York Mets an important two game series for the Braves who have a nice run here at home and a nice run against teams below 500 time to make some hay here in Atlanta GA it's the Mets the Braves game one of our two game set gets underway in just a few moments here at SunTrust Park.
is sponsored by the Georgia Lottery, the All-South Highway Safety Team. The All-South Highway Safety Team reminds you to play it safe by never mixing drinking and driving. And by Synovus, the bank of here. Big crowd finally into SunTrust Park for a beautiful night here in Atlanta, Georgia. The Braves and the New York Mets meet for the 11th time here in the 2018 season. Mike fulton has the game one assignment facing a New York ball club, fellas, that's an absolute free fall. The Mets are 17 and 33 after a blistering 11 and one start. And we like to say, Joe, when we return home, we're coming in hot. The Mets are not. They tonight. are not. They are not. They lost eight out of their nine games at home. And you see the numbers. They were just awful. Two for 39 with runners in scoring position. But, Paul, their pitching's been outstanding, especially the starters. No, it really has. The bullpen, as you can see, struggles. But this is a major league team. They will turn it around. They will break out. We don't know how much because they've had some injuries, as you can see right there. But you know who is hot, guys? Mike fulton How about the big fella from Illinois? His last six starts have been outstanding. He was so excited to pitch, Joe. He went out there, and the umpires had to break it up early. <laughs> and he was yeah. rapid firing, getting his warm-up pitches in. Mike, five and four on the year. Tough loss in San Diego last time out. Fastball command, the issue for Mike out west. Hopefully it won't be an issue for him tonight as we're underway. Well, good, good topic there, Chip, because that's one of his Ford keys tonight. Fastball location. Also, he's a fresh face. He hasn't seen these guys since 2016. That should be to his advantage. But by his own admission, he had good breaking stuff in San Diego. He could put his fastball where he wanted it. And he missed with his first two fastballs before Michael Conforto fouled one straight back for a two ball, one strike count. There are so many Mets who are struggling, it defies explanation. Conforto at the top of the list. And at the top of the lineup card he's over his last 17 and coming off a three for 31 homestand and he just got hit by a pitch on that 2 1 count. I think Brandon Nemo must have shown him how to do that. Remember Nemo yep. led off two games here in their last trip in getting plunked. So Mickey Calloway as Joe and Paul were saying getting excellent starting pitching but getting no offense getting Todd Frazier back should help their Toyota starting nine. Brandon Nimmo's arguably been their best hitter against the Braves as has been Ahmed Rosario the shortstop who's hitting eighth. Keep that in mind as game one unfurls here at SunTrust and there's a slider for a strike to Frazier it's on one. Frazier did not play against the Braves in Atlanta the last time we saw New York here. He was out with a hamstring problem. Todd's only played 37 games, but has homered in back to back games against the Yankees. And another fastball miss for Mike. I'd like to see Fulte calm himself down right now, recognizing that he's in rapid fire mode. I know he's been pitching well, so he's excited to get out there, but this is where you have to breathe. Cage the monster and hit your spot. Two balls and a strike for Frazier, batting 239 on the year. Small lead by Conforto at first, another half step. And a slider strike evens it up. Frazier hit in four straight games, so that's like, by comparison, about a 60-game hitting streak with the rest of the team. <laughs> Mets lost eight of nine, as we showed you on that homestand. There were 12 Mets who had at bats up in New York. Of those 12 Mets, only three hit over 200 on the homestand. Well, a leadoff hit by pitch is a rally, so got to try to calm him down right here. The 2-2 two -two. foul back. As always with Fulte, two strike efficiency is something you have to keep an eye on. One of the things he labored with, as Joe said, fastball command. Then he, when he was able to throw those fastballs for strikes against the Padres and frankly many other teams this year, foul balls start to pile up. Takes him a long time sometimes to resolve it at bat once he gets way ahead. He's got a 2-2 pitch here, and Frazier finished off with some inside heat. 
And one on one out here in the top of the first. That last pitch we saw a lot of inside action. This is the runner starts in you see it move a few inches on the inside. Previous two fastballs overmatched Frazier. I think he got his swing started earlier and committed. And almost hit him. It was moving so much. And guys not 98 but 94. Mm -hmm. Perhaps something Mike can utilize the rest of the game. Here's Brandon Nimmo. Nimmo had a great series against the Braves here in Atlanta at five hits. Including a homer he scored four runs and he drove in four runs not surprising to guys he's hitting third for New York tonight. This is one of my new favorite players in the big leagues. He is all smiles and he is known as the happiest man in baseball out of Wyoming as you guys have mentioned before. And all of his teammates talk about it it's very genuine it's not a, a show. We hope he doesn't walk but if he does he's going to sprint down to first like old Charlie Hustle. Mm -hmm. Nimmo hitting 271 for the year, eight homers, 15 knocked in. 20 extra base hits for the young Met. And that one was right Ooh. there. Mm. Yep. Mike can't believe it. That looked like a perfect strike. Stu Surewater behind the plate. Should have been sure about that. Now it's one and two. Guys, this is where as a pitcher, Fulte can get in a little bit of trouble. We've seen it before. The bad body language. The umpire doesn't make the call and he carries it into his next couple pitches. He didn't right there. He relaxed and hit the outside corner again. Last year, I don't know that he did that so quickly. This year showing a lot of maturity. Good point. Nimmo ready and it's way high. Two starts ago Mike Foltinevich was as brilliant as you can be on a major league mound a complete game shutout out of the Nationals. Last time out against the Padres didn't pitch badly at all two runs in five innings and only five hits. This one's popped into shallow center Ender got a great jump and he'll make the play. So Nimmo got jammed he's the second out Conforto retreats to first and as Drupal Cabrera is coming up. The difference in those two starts though chip it took him one hundred and six pitches for that complete game effort. It took him a hundred pitches to throw five innings in San Diego. He's up to 16 here in the first inning. And here's Cabrera. It'll be interesting to see what Cabrera has. With the lower half in this series he too battling hamstring problems. We're told he is not able to run hard. We're told it really is limiting his range. Let's see how it affects his bat because it's been a good bat against the Braves. Outstanding. And they're taking a big chance here, but they need him so badly in their lineup. They're taking a big chance of losing him for an extended period if he overextends his hammy. 1 0 pitch he is hammered down the right field line and well foul. Well, losing key players is. An all too familiar refrain for the Mets this year. They have 10 players on the disabled list, 10 of them. And they're not just auxiliary players, they no. are big time, prime time performers, including Ioannis Cespedes, who had to come out of a rehab start the other day for the Mets. Way outside, two balls and a strike. They've made a lot of personnel moves over the last two or three days before their arrival here. Including releasing Adrian Gonzalez, first baseman. Juris Familia, their closers on the DL. There's a good list. Ramos, a key setup man for them. And they've been missing. Syndergaard for a while who stayed back in New York he's going to get a second opinion on that index finger issue he's having. Yeah, he was supposed to pitch against the Braves last time we saw New York and can't go. Cabrera's down on strikes and Fulton has a pair of punch outs and a scoreless top of the first.
and by SunTrust. Confidence starts here. Beautiful panoramic view of SunTrust Park from our live Xfinity cam here in Atlanta. That's got a hit batsman, but then struck out twice among the next three hitters. Mike Fultonevich has scored his first. Now the Braves take aim at a local kid, Zach Wheeler, with this Toyota starting nine. It'll be led off by Ozzie Albies. Dansby Swanson again hitting second. Then the potential all-star buddies, Freeman and Marquez, hitting third and fourth. Tyler Flowers back in harness tonight. And Zach Wheeler, fellas, two and four on the year starts for the 12th time tonight. Zach Wheeler, East Paulding County. Now look at this split. Quite a difference between home and road starts. We hope that changes today, but he has been much tougher on the road, 94 to 97 miles an hour. A very, very good pitcher would like to jump on him early. Braves have scored 42 first inning runs. You know, Ozzy has had great success in the opening frame. And you will see a lot of first pitch strikes from Zach Wheeler. Can the Braves take advantage of that tonight? It's 0 and 1 for the Braves leadoff man Ozzy Albies who had a two hit game in L.A. on Sunday. And a line drive towards center Conforto is going to get there and Ozzy's retired for the first out. It's not often that Ozzy gets a ball in on him and doesn't barrel it up but he missed that one jammed him good fastball. Zach Wheeler throws a very easy 97 miles an hour. You saw the last one 98 and it looks like he's just throwing a pin. Since Mesoraco has gotten here and began catching him he has thrown fastballs into right handed hitters more which has made his slider more effective and a big key for him. Dansby can handle the inside fastball. Let's see if he cashes one of those in. And his first look at Wheeler who missed outside ball one. Dansby batting in the number two spot on the lineup card for the fifth, excuse me, for the fourth straight game for Atlanta. He's got three hits, has scored four runs in front of Freddie Freeman of late, and brings a 266 average into game one tonight. There's that nice slider at 92 miles an hour. That's that's not really fair, is it? No. <laughs> Fulte's strikeout pitch on Cabrera was 91, and it was a slider. Two balls and a strike. And fouled at the plate. He's coming off a great start uh, against Baltimore. Yes, Baltimore does have major league players also in their lineup. And he got beat. Or he didn't get beat, but the team lost one to nothing despite the fact that he went seven innings of three hit shutout ball. Sounded very Jacob DeGrom like. Mm -hmm. 2 2 pitch. Line toward the right center field gap. Nobody's going to get that. That's going to bounce up off the fence. Dansby's on his way to second with a double, the first Atlanta hit of the night. Boy, we love to see this, don't we? Dansby driving that ball to right center. After laying off a good slider, swinging at a good slider, that fastball in sinker did not get there, left over the middle, no movement. And as you guys said, Dansby likes to hit a fastball. So that's what you want, men in scoring position for Freddie Freeman and Nick Marcakis. And Freddie's off to a flying start against the Mets. 16 hits, eight RBIs against him this year. Couldn't check his swing and is down a strike. Freddie on an amazing roll. He's hit safely in 21 of his last 22 games. And enters action tonight with the second highest batting average in the National League. And that's inside. Even count. Right guys at the right time for Atlanta hoping to add to their 42 run total scored in the first inning this year. Didn't get it. Coming off a great road trip. 10 for 26 three of the 10 hits were homers. 
and hitting 400 against the Mets. As you said, Chip, he's wearing them out. One ball, two strikes. Zarocco liked where that pitch was delivered, but it was off the plate, and Freddie took it. Little cutter up and in. Now, guys, he does have a split finger that he started throwing in San Diego in early May. He uses against righties and lefties, but we chance we could see it here. That might have been it. It bounced up there and no advance for Swanson. Mesoraco known for his defensive prowess when we, he first came up with the Reds, but a hip injury sidelined him for almost two years. It really took a lot out of him. Yeah, torn hip labor. Yeah, he's come all the way back from that. Three balls, two strikes for Freeman. Perhaps a milestone at bat for him. The pitch. It's caught on a missed. Freeman strikes out. 99. Wow. The reason I thought that was a milestone at bat, it's been a while since a Brave has earned a walk. With that strikeout, it is 87 plate appearances by a Braves hitter between bases on balls. I'm really shocked at that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they do such a good job of cutting down on their strikeouts. They see a lot of pitches. So Wheeler with a nasty pitch strikes out Freeman. And Nick Markakis, the hitter. Nick, too, has torn up New York pitching. He's knocked in 10 runs with 15 hits in the first 10 games. As Arocco came out and gave a bunch of signs to the infielders to let him know what he was going to do, I guess if Dansby was running, Todd Frazier was looking in the Mets dugout with his palms up like, what are we doing here? I mean, I'm in a shift. Mm -hmm. What if he steals? What are we doing? <laughs> it's no secret where he's going to throw the ball. Oh, did you see what Wheeler did there? As he began his move to the plate, he took a quick peek over his right shoulder to see what Dansby Swanson was doing before he turned it loose to the plate. And he missed badly, ball two. Now here's where you have two outs. You need to make your pitch, and it's sometimes tough if you're worried about the base runner. All of a sudden, you're not picking up your target. You've got to turn and throw. The bouncing ball hit toward first. Dominic Smith just called back up by the Mets. And the Braves are out of luck in the first inning. Wheeler and Fulton Evick scoreless as we head to the second.
Baseball history brought to you by Geico on June 12, 1983. Dale Murphy had a pregame visit with six year old Elizabeth Smith, who had lost both of her hands and a leg in a tragic accident. Elizabeth's nurse asked the two time MVP to hit a home run for her, and Dale Murphy obliged with two of them as the Braves beat the Giants three to two. You know, that doesn't surprise me at all. Murph could do just about anything he wanted on the field. So good. That's a great story. That is a great story. Easy out for Mike fulton -Evich. Jay Bruce rolls over for one out on one pitch, and Devin Mezzarocco is coming up. I loved looking at that old video of Murph and his swings because, man, oh, man, did he get some extension. Oh, he's getting that ball out front. Mazzarocco's hit six homers and takes downstairs. He was the man that came from Cincinnati for Matt Harvey. A deal that, quite frankly, has helped both clubs. Matt Harvey's pitched a lot better with Cincinnati. And Mazzarocco drives one deep toward left field. Charlie Culberson back to the wall. Has just enough room right at the 375 sign. The wind blowing in from left just saved Mike Fultonevich. Had plenty of room. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> and the thing about it is, Mike hasn't given up hardly any home runs lately. Speaking of extension, no home runs in his last three starts and only one in his last seven. Charlie was ready to climb the wall, too. He's a little disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> so here's Dominic Smith. Joe mentioned the flurry of roster moves the Mets made. One of them was the release of Adrian Gonzalez. Dominic Smith, one of their better prospects. We saw him late last year, and his first 50 games or so in the big leagues were a struggle for him. But he did hit nine homers. In 49 games, drove in 26. And he looks like a much trimmer Dominic Smith yeah, definitely does and went to camp. That was a big test. They thought he would had a chance to make their club was in good shape but strained a quad muscle and missed just about all of spring training. No balls two strikes and a swing and a miss Fulton Evich has an easy second. He needed that. He's got three strikeouts still no score.
still on the Braves disabled list and they're hoping to get them back. Hopefully this homestand two of those guys being Ronald Acuna Jr. and Julio Tehran. Now for Acuna he hasn't done rigorous baseball activity yet but Brian Snickers said he's trending that way. He has been doing straightaway runs. He wants to play. He said he's ready to go but the Braves are taking it really easy with him. He did work out with the team today and as for Tehran he threw a bullpen today. They're going to decide where he's at tomorrow but Paul Bird I'm sure you know this he's focused on how his thumb feels when he's throwing that breaking ball. So that's what they're currently making sure is good to go before Julio comes back. I appreciate that Kelsey. Yes a lot of people kind of make fun of the pitchers Joe when you have a hangnail or something a little wrong. I got to tell you you need every finger especially when you twist that breaking ball. Unless you're Mordecai Brown then you only need three. <laughs> he's 80 <Yeah>. percent <laughs> boy always. Uh, you, this guy's quick you knew he'd have something. <laughs> Well, it'll be great to get those two guys back. Braves will get another important player back tomorrow afternoon. First, the pitch. Tyler Flowers, who hits it a mile high to straightaway center. And Michael Conforto is there to make the grab. One out. We'll welcome Mike Soroka back tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, that'll be great to see him back out there. Have missed watching him pitch. I uh, I was watching Acuna today during batting practice. He was in center field shagging. And seemed to be moving just fine, getting his breaks and jumps on balls. But so, better to be cautious on this deal. And I would assume, and this is only a, a guess on my part, I would be shocked if the Braves saw him playing in the Toronto series. I, I can't imagine they'd let him run around on the artificial surface in Toronto. So maybe when we get back from our brief two game trip, which features Baltimore and Cincinnati again the Braves in a stretch four straight home opponents with sub 500 records. Let's face it. We all thought the season was over for Acuna. So. Take your time let him make sure he's right. And uh, enjoy the fact that the Braves didn't lose him for the whole year. And if there's any Braves fans out there that's upset that he's not back in there just go watch the video. Yeah. And you'll be thankful that. Mm -hmm. He's not in a cast. I still don't know how he recovered. Maybe it's because he's 20. Yeah. <laughs> but he's so powerful. That was just mm -hmm. an amazing feat to see him hit first, twist his knee, and be able to even walk off the field. That just missed outside for Camargo, and it's a full count. The last brave to walk was Kurt Suzuki in the first game in Los Angeles. And Camargo takes care of that. A one out free pass brings up Ender Inciarte in a scoreless game. Pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. That's the second Braves, first Braves walk, I should say, in 90 plate appearances. So amazing. let's see if Ender can cash it in. It's amazing for this club. Right. You know? Boy, Ender's got some good looking wood. Look at the grain on that bat. That's pretty. Hope it has a lot of hits in it. A little dribbler. Wheeler says he's got it and he shovels low to first. What a play by Smith, who had to reach across in harm's way and cover the baseline. With Ender streaking down the line, he's out. And that's the second out of the inning. He almost underhanded that. For an error. You're right. Heck of a play by Smith. Very tough as Smith has to go across the baseline to catch that much trimmer. Does have good hands at first. They hope that the much trimmer frame will allow him to go right and left and be a better defender. Look good on that one. So here's Charlie Culberson. Mike Fultonevich is on deck. I'd be shocked if Carly if Charlie gets much good to hit here. We'll see how it works out for New York. The pitch. Blown away. Ball one. Charlie's got six hits. He's homered and knocked in four against New York pitching. Line drive right field. Long run Bruce. He slides and he gets there. 
They pitched to Culberson and Charlie almost made him pay with a sinking line drive to right. Jay Bruce saves a run, recording the third and final out in the Braves' second inning. Fastest internet with the best in-home Wi-Fi experience. Delta Airlines. And by your local Ford dealer. No score after two. Braves and Mets meeting for the 11th time this year. Let's take a look at our SunTrust Confidence Starts Here feature. The Braves very confident about their work against their divisional foes. Outstanding record. A lot of runs scored. I in particular, Paul, like batting averages. Good pitching in this division. Up and down. And for the team to be hitting 303, that's not bad. No, I agree. And even Wheeler throwing the ball 99 miles an hour up and in, doing a great job. But there's just better velocity better pitching going on right now and it's a credit to the Braves they're hitting one through nine everybody's taking turns at being a hero. Bolton has retired the last six Mets hopefully he'll have good luck against Ahmed Rosario. The kid shortstop for New York put on a show the last time the Mets were at SunTrust Park. He had seven hits drove in three runs. Scored three times and made a sensational play up the middle to start a double play that broke the Braves' hearts in the eighth inning of the final game of the series. And that's fouled at the plate. One ball, two strikes. Huge difference in Fulton Avich this year was the secondary pitch. You see that slider right there. For me, he's done a great job of managing his emotions. Fastball is good, but his breaking ball, his slider is so much better. This year than last year. That ERA at 231 versus last year, 2017, 479. Do you think that's uh, due partly to the change in his mechanics, Paul? He's a little, he's not quite as out of control in his mechanics, I guess would be the way to put it. Yeah, I think he's made an evolution with each year. One of them has been to not throw my fastball. 99 miles an hour every time relax and I think the same thing has been true for the breaking ball so this year he said okay I don't need to throw my slider as hard as I can every single time and make it to where I strike everybody out I need to relax and hit my spot with that too. Well he's retired seven straight now he's got Zach Wheeler up there but don't think this is an easy out it's not he might be one of the best hitters on their team right now. <laughs> with a 286 average. And he puts this one in play to second. Ozzie's got that. And the flip to first for the second out. Well, I love these early outs. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, as you said, Paul, he, he was amped up, fired up, wanted to get yes. after it. Now he's sort of settled in a little bit. He got into Peter Moylan's coffee cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> so he had the, uh, you know, his levels of caffeine were off. He went out, and, and if you missed it, 
He threw so many pitches early in his warmups. The umpires had to break out early, and then the next thing you know, he wasn't hitting any of his spots. But you know, Joe, a good pitcher, you got to get to him early. No guarantees, but it looks like he's done a better job of settling in. I think he has. The only Met base runner was a gift. Michael Conforto was hit by a pitch, and this time takes one over the outer edge for a strike. When you're over your last 17 and three for 31, you'll even you don't even mind getting hit if you can get on base. That's Conforto. Line to left. And I'll bet you if you ask the Mets people about their lineup, this is the count. It seems like every single one of their hitters is in every time they come up. 0 and 2. And here it is. Something off speed that missed. Conforto took it. One ball, two strikes. Nice curveball down right there. I don't mind that that missed in front of the plate. He hasn't thrown many of them, but I like that he's thrown it because now second time through the lineup, the hitters have to factor in, okay, he's got a nasty slider and curveball too. Now the 2-2 pitch. It's tipped and caught by Flowers, and Conforto twisted into a pretzel. That's the fourth strikeout for Fulte, who set down nine straight. Braves seven and three against the Mets. Only four and three against them here at SunTrust Park, however. Ton of runs, good ERA. That adds up to one and seven out of ten. Mike Fultonevich leads off the Atlanta third against Wheeler. And that's an interesting thing about the Braves this year, guys. We've talked a lot about how they've done against the winning teams, the good teams in the major leagues this year. Very impressive numbers. The Braves have played the fewest games in the major leagues against sub 500 teams this year just 19. However they're only 10 and 9 against those clubs. Mike down on strikes one away quickly in the third inning second strikeout for Wheeler does that 10 and 9 mark surprise you a little bit. Surprises me but I also have to quantify it with where we just played and that was San Diego who was, was playing much better baseball than the Dodgers who were red hot. I want to show you guys something I want to show everybody at home. 
a bat that we showed earlier tonight that Ozzy was using. We were talking about the All-Star game. This is one of the most amazing bats and grain I have ever seen in my life. There's only like eight lines in it, and that is some awesome wood for a rookie. <laughs> you usually don't get that till you got 10 years that's in right. and you're an All-Star. Yeah, that's Freddie Freeman stuff. That mm. is an amazing bat. Stroke toward left, but right at Nemo, who's got it, and quickly to her out. So what does that grain do? What, what, what's the difference between? It talks to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> it tells you it's ready. Oh, okay. It is just a very hard bat. So I know what Joe is going to say, as he just did. The wider the grains, the harder the bat, so the ball will jump off it more. But did you know, as a pitcher, I wanted the opposite. I did not want good grains because I wanted the ball to die on a bunt. So if you had bad bats, go put them in my locker. <laughs> That's a great plan. Dansby Swanson has the lone Braves hit. It was a double with one out in the first inning. Yeah, nice balsa wood model mm -hmm. would probably have mm -hmm. worked great, right? That's what I want, yep. That may have been a reason why my average was so low. Career below 200 hitter. That will help uh, dump a few hits in there. <laughs> a little soft serve mm -hmm. over short. Tell you what, Zach Wheeler, this is as hard as I've seen him throw. Yeah. And he's had his share of arm troubles. Had Tommy John three years ago. Last year, a couple of stints on the disabled list with some bicep tendonitis and elbow inflammation. But man, oh man, is he airing it out. And he's pitched backwards. He did this to Flowers. He went 2-0 on him and threw a fastball in. He just did it again to Dansby. I don't necessarily agree with that because as a right-hander, that's the hardest pitch to throw, a fastball in. Most of the time when you miss, you miss arm side, and it can result in a hit by pitch. But he continues to try to do it. He's 28 years old now, 6'4", 195. Was the first pick by the Giants in 09. Right ahead of the Braves who wanted him too. Three balls and a strike. And a fly ball center. Conforto is there and Wheeler has a perfect bottom of the third. Frazier, Nimmo and Cabrera coming up still scoreless.
Zinovich has not allowed a hit. He's allowed just one base runner. That's thanks to a hit batsman. And as the Mets come up in the fourth inning, Frazier, Nimmo, and Cabrera, the first three for New York. Frazier struck out in the first inning. Boy, it was a nasty pitch, too. And he took another one here and is down 0 1. Frazier in the locker room, making sure that everybody stays up through this tough time period. Had a pretty good playlist going that included Curtis Blow. A little dancing in the locker room. Now, it's not that they don't care that they're losing, but they realize, hey, we are going through a tough time. Guys have been on the DL. We can't collapse now and have the locker room uh, feeling like a morgue. Well, he won't be dancing to that 98 tune on the outside <laughs> corner. I'll tell you that. That was heck of a pitch. But it's on the veterans sometimes to keep everything's a little loose. Mm -hmm. When you saw a guy throwing 99 miles an hour and you knew you had to get ready, did you say, OK, I'm I'm going to just swing for a fastball, let everything else go? Or did you try to adjust to a breaking ball? No, I, I, I might once in a while try to guess early in okay. the count. But I was more than likely just trying to sit on fastball and trying to get set and get my hands in a position to try to get it the bat out there quick enough. That didn't happen enough. Full count. And Frazier didn't get a disappearing slider. He strikes out for the second time. There's that off speed that we talk about. Excellent fastball, but the slider is in a prime location. Looks like it's going to be right down the middle and breaks off the outside corner. That is a nasty Navich. Nasty Navich. Oh. Yeah. By the way, pretty interesting sequence there for Frazier. He saw six pitches. He swung at one of them. Mm -hmm. Then the strike three. That might be a game plan for New York. Try to wait Mike out, but all of a sudden he's throwing more strikes early in the count. He's set down the last 10. He has struck out five Mets hitters. As a pitcher, Paul, didn't you love hearing stuff like that in the dugout? If there's a guy having a little hissy fit, like, oh, love it. Man, I'm in his head. Tommy Gregg was the worst former Braves player. I hope he's listening. I used to jam him with 86, 87, and he would yell not so nice obscenities at me <laughs> running to first about me being a sissy. And I was like, <laughs> I just got you out with an 87 mile an hour fastball in. <laughs> I can't pitch any tougher. But uh, it always made me feel good and actually elevated my confidence. You're right. One ball, two strikes for Brandon Nimmo. And he almost got plunked. And that's not fair. I mean, he's shown him a first pitch curveball on the outside corner, second pitch change up away. That last pitch up and in right there at 99, moving him off the plate. A lot of options. So if you're Nimmo, it's hard to guess. He guessed wrong. Fastball right down the middle. Well, it was a fastball called for a fastball in. I think he got caught guessing something off speed after the setup. Well, and that's why I was asking you, Joe. People have different approaches. That is 99 miles an hour. Outstanding, even had a little comeback action to it. Not fair. So when you're operating and clicking on all cylinders, he's going to be tough to beat no matter who walks up to the plate. Here's Cabrera. He struck out to end the first. And he's going to bounce one, two first off the heel of Freddie's glove. But Cabrera with those sore hamstrings, very slow down the line. And he's the 12th straight man retired by Mike Fultonevich.
Jack Wheeler. Let's see if Freddie Freeman can put the Braves on the board. He's tonight's Georgia Lottery hitting the jackpot feature. Second, second, second. Sixth in RBIs. Not that far behind in homers. Only four back. I love the fact that he is leading the all-star balloting, getting the most votes. A lot of times I don't think he gets the most credit. And you know, he's been hurt at times, but he is one of the league's best hitters. And at times, I don't think he gets uh, recognized as he should. So I, I'm so excited for that. Me too. Um, sometimes he's an afterthought when mm -hmm. national media start talking about the National League first baseman. They always start with Paul Goldschmidt, and rightfully so. He's been a good player. But finally, Freddie's getting his due. Yeah, and Anthony Rizzo with the Cubs, of course. Mm -hmm. Big national following with that Cubs franchise. Mm -hmm. Brian Zimmerman. Two balls and a strike. And they're trying to keep the ball in on Freddie's hands, and Wheeler missed badly. Three and one. Shift on for the Braves' first baseman. The pitch is taken low and away. So a leadoff man on for Atlanta. Let's hope that leads to good fortune. One on, nobody out. The Braves have walked twice tonight. Wheeler back to the stretch with Nick Marcakis up. It had been so long since Zach Wheeler had pitched, had pitched against the Braves. There's not that many guys in the lineup that had faced him. Just Freddie and Flowers, and Flowers is only one for one with a homer off of him. So a lot of these guys are seeing him for the first time. Maybe this second time through the order will help them. Nick Marcakis 0 for 1. He bounced out to first in the first. And takes downstairs. How rewarding would it be for Nick to make the All Star game this year? You can vote for Nick online as well. More hits among active players than anybody else mm -hmm. in Major League Baseball, never to have played in the All Star game. That does not seem possible considering the great numbers Nick put up in his early days as a Baltimore Oriole. I asked him if he was enjoying the attention. And he said, no, I just want our team to win the game. I want to go out and play, he said, but I know what comes with it. But I think somewhere inside, he's got to be excited at 34 years old, possibly going to that all-star game. Good lead by Freddie, the pitch. And Marcakis sprays one into center field. That's going to get down. So the Braves have a threat here. Their first big threat of the night. First and second with nobody out. Another hit for old reliable Nick Markakis, our landmark always best, always feature. And tied with Freddie Freeman for the most hits. He just passed him on that list with that base hit. First in multi hit games, doesn't strike out. And what else do you want? Well, and he wins the Heart and Hustle Award every year. Plays the game the right way. Yep. Braves 0 for 3 so far with a runner in scoring position. Let's see if Tyler Flowers can take care of that. He has shown the ability to hit the ball the other way in this situation. Look at where Dominic Smith is playing. And he pops one into shallow center. Long run. That ball's going to get down. And everybody's safe. A walk and two singles, and Atlanta's in business. Bases loaded, nobody out. Both of those last two hits were very hard to read for the center fielder Conforto, especially Tyler's because it was loud, sounded a lot better than it really was hit. And you can see Nick was almost to second base. He had a better angle on seeing where that ball was going to drop than Freddie did. Well, this is an interesting matchup for the Atlanta offense against Zach Wheeler. Major League opponents hitting 458 against him on the first pitch. Atlanta swings at the first pitch at a 35% rate and has more hits than any other team on the first pitch of a sequence. So all of that came in play with the Flowers at bat. Let's see what happens with Johan Camargo here. Bags full of Braves and nobody out. That was some pretty good info you just threw at us. I like that combination if I'm a Braves fan. You bet. And Camargo has hit three homers against New York this year. One here might bring the house down. He walked his first time up. 
And Paul, if you're Wheeler, knowing how the Mets aren't scoring runs, you've got to really be nervous in this spot, I would think. You do. You get stingy. You have to make your pitch. You can't try to strike out three with one hitter right here. So you have to remind yourself, execute pitch after pitch. Just worry about this one or setting up the next one. Can't worry about who's on deck. Just have to work on this hitter and make your pitches. Those numbers very impressive, but I think all honesty, we'd all agree that they've cooled pretty dramatically over the last two weeks. Johan down 0 and 2. And the pitch is bounced right back to the mound. He's coming to the plate for one. They're going to go to third for two. Wheeler couldn't have drawn it up any better than that. A 1 2 5 double play, and it's first and second, two out. Not sure where Camargo was going. He was headed to the dugout until Eric Young said, Hey, 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 get over here. They didn't come to first, they went to third. I don't know the last time I saw a catcher go to third on that. Very, very unusual heads up play by Mazzarocco, who sees everything, but how about Frazier being there? Again, very, very nice play by the Mets. And as you say, the threat's not over, but that was huge. Ander tapped back to the mound his first time up. And a great play by Dominic Smith saved Wheeler an error on an underhand toss to first base. It's been an extended slide for Ender, who's hitting 210 since May 2nd. Tyler Flowers, the lead runner at second, and a strike at the knees. Even count. Guys, that's a changeup at 90 miles an hour over the outside corner. You said something about not being fair. Yes. And it is. It's not 10, but 8, 9 off his fastball, where it should be. So Atlanta had him bases loaded nobody out a comebacker turns into a double play. And now Ender down to his last strike in the bottom of the fourth. What was the word you used a minute ago Paul it, you can't be greedy. With respect to bases loaded nobody out you mm -hmm. got to make your pitches. You can get greedy now. That's true. Now the one two pitch and that's fouled off the umpire's foot and they're still alive. I had a pitching coach Braves organization if you guys remember Bill Fisher. Sure. And he had always say no matter what the situation if you throw strikes you have a chance and if you get a ground ball back to yourself and you're ready to field it you can get out of anything and he was right. Again the one two. Charlie Culberson waits on deck. Atlanta hopes to bring him up here in the fourth. Still no score. Wheeler and Fultonevich. Little looper into shallow left is going to get down. Ender comes through with a two out, two strike hit, and the Braves have a lead. Oh, and did you see the reaction of Zach Wheeler? Couldn't believe it. Ender with a clutch hit to get a run in. Nice job on the slider in, working it over. And as you said, Joe, Wheeler was so frustrated he forgot the backup third base. So the Braves get a patented two out run number 137 on the year. It's a one nothing game with Charlie up there. He hit it sharply to right last time up and Bruce made a nice running catch to rob him. So one run for Atlanta might feel like 10 for Zach Wheeler. It might feel like 10 for Fulton Evich the way he's pitching.
The pitch. Nasty slider evens the count. to Frazier he smoked that ball but Todd was in the right place at the right time Ender with a clutch hit gives Atlanta a one run lead. We got four seam fastball. Really pretty average grip is to throw a ball. Two seam, um, kind of run along the, the seams there. Um, so if you want to move your thumb, higher you go, you know, the more movement will do. Curveball, for me along the horseshoe there. I really choked this one with the slider. I go on the other side of the horseshoe now. And Mike's whole repertoire on display tonight. He is pitching a beautiful game. He's retired 12 straight. After throwing 21 first inning pitches, he's thrown just 30 through four. And he's in the fifth inning now with a 1 0 lead. And Jay Bruce lifts one to straightaway center. And Ender, with the game's only RBI, makes the catch. And the fifth inning underway. It's as always presented by Audi. What's amazing for me on those pitch grips, if you have your fingers further apart, the slower it is. If they're together, the faster. It's good for a mile an hour or two at least. On his four seamer, he has space between his fingers. That's unbelievable. I mean, it tells me not that he needs to change a thing, but he's still on 99 miles an hour with the slower of the four seam fastball grips. That's incredible. Well, Long run Freddie in foul ground and won't have a play. I'm sorry, Joe. That might be something that the league is making him do, Paul, just to <laughs> give hitters a chance. It wouldn't be fair like if you put handicap. them together. Yeah. I got it. Okay. They did that with Secretariat, I think. Yeah. Well, the run for Fultonevich is unbelievably good. He's allowed four earned runs in his last 41 innings. The league hitting under 170 against him in that stretch. But he's only three and two. Like Wheeler tonight, Mike has also at times felt has been victimized by a lack of run support. He's got one to work with tonight, and the bottom part of the order coming up. And that just missed ball two.
Ground ball up the middle, and that's the first New York hit. So Mesoraco guides a single up the middle. That's the first Met base runner since Michael Conforto led off the game being hit by a pitch. Well, Mesoraco is the only guy really tonight that's had good swings off of him. Remember, he backed Charlie up to the wall his first time up. Well, I'm new to the three man booth, guys. I didn't know if we were allowed to start talking about a no hitter or when we should do it. Oh, but it's over. You're a pitcher. You can talk about it anytime you want. Get a lot of hate mail on Twitter, but yeah, I could. Dominic Smith saw three pitches and struck out his first time up. Mike has thrown 10 straight first pitch strikes to the Mets offense. That's a good way to work. If you were in the dugout and you talked about a no hitter, you did. You'd, you'd get punched out. Mm -hmm. But we're not in the dugout. This is true. Unless you want to be, and then Joe can slug you. That's <laughs> entirely, entirely up to you. Well, that was about the time, and I, I've yeah. certainly, you know, never <laughs> thrown one, so I want to act like an expert. About that fourth or fifth inning, that's when guys start leaving you alone, <laughs> and I mean everybody. And uh, Fulty had one against the A's, if you remember, going sure. up into the seventh, eighth inning, and he turned to Tyler Flowers, who was the only person who was sitting near him, and said, "I got to go to the bathroom. What do I do?" Flo looked at me and said, I think if you go to the bathroom, it's not going to have any bearing on how you hit your spots in the game. Get up and go. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like when people talk about a no hitter when they're reporting on the game. There you have it. Thanks, guys. I just got better. Yeah, but you know what? I, I have a theory on that. It's the bubble theory. Okay. You know, like a level when you're leveling a board or wall, the bubble that's in between the lines. When you're going good, and I use this golf and golf analogy all the time when you're going well don't change your bubble everything in your body mm -hmm. is where it's supposed to be <laughs> and if you go to the bathroom you you change your bubble you change it mm -hmm. that might have been what happened to him very creative up See, you, you or gave maybe up flow yeah. was wrong ground ball right side that's through for Dominic Smith Mesoraco will stop at second back to back New York hits. Conversely, if you're really scuffling, like the Mets, every guy ought to be changing his bubble every inning if they can. First hit for the year for Dominic Smith, just called up. Yeah, that no hit bid by Fultonevich last June 30th out in Oakland. A full count homer to Matt Olson spoiled it in the ninth inning. Great work by Fultonevich out west. He's got a one nothing lead with the eighth place hitter Rosario up and another first pitch strike. I love that pitch right there after giving up two ground balls that found their way through the infield. You have the eighth and the ninth that are coming up. I know Wheeler has hit well but he's a pitcher. This is a crucial at bat first pitch slider for again another strike one. And he's pushed off the plate for an even count. Rosario is becoming a much more disciplined hitter at the plate. He struck out 25 times in his first 27 games, just 20 strikeouts since. That'll be put to the test against Fultonevich here tonight. He's set up for the wipeout slider. The first pitch that he threw was a get me over slider. Joe, you asked about a difference. I believe this is one of them. The maturity we see in pitch selection and effort on the pitches. Now with one, two, eighth hitter, he has the choice to go to his nasty slider. Or throw 100 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> well, he had a choice. <laughs> yeah. I still like your your idea better. Two balls, two strikes. Back to back hits by New York with one out. And the pitch is tapped foul. Rosario just 22 years old. That signed him as a non-drafted player in 2012. 
was called up last August 1st. Now the 2 2 is a little pop into shallow center field. Albies has that. That's called an infield fly. There's the second out. Now the pitcher's up. But beware, Wheeler. Again, a good hitter. Six for 22 this year at the plate. And pulled the ball on the ground his last time up. Got around on him. Righty pitcher, lefty hitter. Got that big arm pad on to protect that right arm. You don't want to see 99 coming in on you and that's your pitching arm. One ball, no strikes. Swing and a miss. Joe mentioned that Wheeler was the sixth overall pick by the Giants way back in 2009. The Mets got him for Carlos Beltran in 2011. The 1 1 pitch. Swing and a miss. I like those last two pitches. 1 0, he throws two breaking balls in a row, but if you notice, Flowers set right down the middle and gave him a low target. This is the pitcher. Let's not try to be too fine and end up walking someone. Runners lead the 1 2. High pop right side. It's going to stay in play for Freddie Freeman. He's got it on the warning track, and Fulton Evich pitches out of fifth inning trouble and protects a one run lead. by sharing a photo or video with hashtag hats off for heroes for each post t-mobile will donate one dollar to support veterans one nothing braves and braves country you guys have been doing a phenomenal job voting these guys into the all-star game the first results came back as you heard Three of these guys would be starting if the voting ended today. Now, there are multiple ways to vote. You can vote online like many of you have been doing on MLB.com slash vote. Or if you come out to the stadium, you can vote here. They have a voting booth set up ready to go where you can just submit your votes five times an hour for these guys. But 633,000 votes for Freddie Freeman leads the National League. You guys are doing a phenomenal job. But Chip, Joe, and Birdie, I got to get out of here because there's people waiting and they want to go ahead and vote for their Braves. <laughs> Love it. Gosh, I wish they had those things set up all over the ballpark. Wouldn't that be Yeah, great? exactly oh. right. So Freddie Freeman, Nick Markakis, and Ozzie Albies leading in the popular vote. 
at their respective positions. The last three years, Atlanta has had just one All-Star representative in each of those seasons. Shelby Miller in 2015, Julio Tehran in 2016, Ender Inciarte last year. And what makes this year's balloting so exciting, not just the great years those three are having, the last time the Braves had three position players start an All-Star game was 1960. Mm. Wow. Del oh. Crandall, Joe Adcock, and Eddie Matthews. Along with Henry Aaron. There were four players. They were the Milwaukee Braves. Correct. I would not have guessed that to the teams in the 90s and 2000s. Right. So Mike fulton also might be generating some all-star consideration with his excellent work on the mound leading off. Takes upstairs. Two balls, two strikes. Dave Roberts will have the luxury of selecting the pitching staff for the National League. He led the Dodgers to the World Series last year. And Fulte's making Wheeler work here. That's also good news. Two and two. Braves loaded the bases. Nobody out in the fourth inning. Wheeler got Camargo to hit into a double play and then Ender served one over the shortstop's head for the lone run scoring hit tonight. And the 2-2 pitch is tapped toward Rosario at short. He will make the play and Fultanevich is going to be out number one. Visit Synovus for your banking, lending, and investing needs. Synovus, the bank of here. So back to the top of the order we go. Ozzy Albies will dig in. Ozzy's hit the ball in the air twice. Once to center, once to left. Ozzy, one of three Atlanta era second basemen to get to the 15 homer total before the All Star break. Can you name the other two? I'll bet Davey Johnson was one. Yes, that's the one I thought would trip you up. The other one is in more recent vintage in Atlanta. He had a very long hitting streak. Oh, Dan Ugla. Wow. That's exactly right. Dan Ugla, Davey Johnson, and Ozzie Albies, the only three second basemen in Atlanta era history with 15 or more homers before the break. The 2 1 pitch. Another pop up. This one in foul ground. Todd Frazier slowing and makes the play. Two outs. Might see Ozzy get the ball on the ground a little more and use those legs. Maybe next time up he'll be able to do that. He's 0 for 3. And Dansby's coming up. Uh, first inning double got his homestand off to a good start. Hit the ball hard his last time up too, and he has not had a lot of success against the Mets so far this year. Coming into this game, he had had 30 at bats and 13 strikeouts. But he had a good road trip. Seven for 25 with a homer, hit the ball hard as he did his second time up tonight and didn't have anything to show for it. This one's hit hard toward right. Bruce on the run, still going back. Takes a peek at the wall and hauls it in right at the 375 sign. Dansby hit it there for a second time. He's one for three, and we go to the sixth inning.
impressive line from Mike Fulton Evich. Well that's one thing but his night is over. For whatever reason that we certainly don't know he is out of the game and Jesse Biddle is on to pitch. Mike hit for himself in the bottom half of the inning and seemed to be OK running down the line to first well, round out. He jogged very slowly kind of like mm -hmm. what the Braves did when Bobby was the manager when he'd say easy mm -hmm. don't, don't mm -hmm. strain yourself. But he's out after only 73 pitches. But Biddle was up. When or before. Mike got in the box to hit. Well. Something to think about. The Mets have a lot of left handed bats in the lineup. Maybe the Braves don't want Mike to face the lefties a third time in a one nothing game. I, I mean it's a reach. I, I, yeah, it it is. I don't think so. I, I, I mean I, if it is I'll be shocked at that. And I don't know that he should have hit if that were the case. I agree I'm confused we'll have to have. Uh, hopefully we get some info now and Kelsey after the game will have to help us out with that one. But five innings of two hit shutout balls six strikeouts no walks and a hit batter for Fulton Evich. And now Biddle takes over and misfires to Michael Conforto. Three balls and a strike. A game in the hands of the Atlanta bullpen protecting a one nothing lead Biddle. Gave up a run against the Dodgers in his last outing. Three outings ago was brilliant against Washington. Eight strikeouts and three innings of one hit relief. Well, the guy that's got to be most excited is Zach Wheeler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's kind of like when you're pitching against DeGrom and he comes out of the ball game, you think, okay, well, maybe we can scratch out a run against the bullpen. Big high hop for Freddie Freeman. Nice comeback for Biddle to get Conforto, who's over two, one out. That's no slap on the bullpen. That's. A compliment to Mike and how well he's pitched. Hope Mike's okay. Yeah, we, we didn't see George Poulos or any of the other training staff attending to Mike on the bench. Chuck Hernandez was the only man talking to him before he made his way to the clubhouse to contemplate his start. So that's a head scratcher. Here's Frazier. He might be happy too that Fulty's out of the game. Todd is 0 for 2 with two swinging strikeouts tonight. You may say, hey, Fulty, I'm seeing 99. We could bring a lefty in. He gets righties out and lefties. Right handed batters have just five hits in the last 50 at bats against them. Here's one of the reasons why. Look at that stutter step, 95 from the left side. Good breaking ball. It's just easy. He doesn't have a high leg kick. He stops it. He has a little bit of a pause. And if you're a hitter that's got to get that front foot down and about timing, he's really difficult to time up. Do you remember Rob Nen with the stutter step 100? Sure. Yeah, I threw in the upper 90s and he said, I couldn't get anybody out until I did something a little different. When I hit with my landing foot and I had a stutter step and then I threw it, all of a sudden the hitters couldn't time me up and we're late. So Frazier earns a walk. The first free pass issued by the Braves tonight for Atlanta's relief core May was a terrific month. They really cut down on their walks. Mm -hmm. 65 of them in April 29 of them in May. That's number 15 already in 30 innings of work by the relievers in the month of June. And now Nimmo's the batter. He's 0 for 2. Frazier represents the tying run at first base. The pitch bounced up there. Nice stop by Flowers. Ball one. Even when the bullpen did walk too many, many of those guys did a nice job coming in and making the pitches when they had to. And another reason for the Atlanta Braves' success this year, not just the starting pitching, but the bullpen has got the job done. 1 0 count. And right there. Biddle is the prototypical reverse splits left handed pitcher. Right handed hitters hitting 100 against him. They're 5 for 50. Left handers 12 for 29, a 414 mark. We'll see what gives here with Nimmo, a left hand hitting outfielder for New York. One ball, one strike.
Those are about as extreme splits as you can have mm -hmm. as a big league pitcher. I'll say. And Nimmo gets hit. And they're going to call him back and say he didn't try to get out of the way. In fact, he threw his elbow up at that pitch ball. And Mickey Callaway is going to come out and argue with Stu Shurewater. Yeah, Stu saying he actually threw his elbow up at it. And they just threw Callaway out of the game. It's a lot of late of frustration built up for Mickey Callaway. You see right here, it is in the rule book that the hitter has to make an attempt to get out of the way. Nimmo clearly leaving his arm over the plate. They don't always call that. It usually takes a little bit more, but I agree with this. This is the right call. Oh, he stuck that elbow that out there. That is a great call. That is a great call. He, he flinched and then lowered his elbow to make sure it was in the path. Mm -hmm. Great call by the umpire. So the first time Mickey Calloway has been ejected as the Mets manager. Nimmo now has a three ball one strike count. And back to back walks from Biddle. Got a break couldn't use it. And Chuck Hernandez is going to come out and talk it over. Braves lead 1 0. Game one of this homestand against the New York Mets. Plenty to talk about. All star voting. Big action around the major leagues. We got the Nationals and the Yankees playing tonight. There's a lot of great topics for you coming up in the middle of the seventh inning. It's the stretch presented by Rooms to Go. They're just checking on them right here. Now, what's interesting about this is Cabrera, being a switch hitter, will hit right handed. As we mentioned earlier, righties have a tougher time against Biddle, but as a lefty, you don't turn around and hit lefty off a lefty, so he's going to continue to hit right-handed. Has that hamstring that's not 100%, if they can get a ground ball right here, good double play candidate. Yeah, that's a good call. They need the ground ball, and he's got to be around the plate to get a ground ball. He can't walk another guy. Braves Relief Corps walked 10 men on the road trip. Biddle's walk two after getting it out. Now a ground ball to toward short. Second base bobble. Dansby couldn't unload. He almost certainly would have had a great chance to get the double play because Cabrera's got a bad hamstring and was very slowly down the line. Instead, all hands are safe. And Jay Bruce, the hitter, with one out. He caught that ball in the heel of his glove and that may have made it a little difficult reaching into the glove to find the baseball because it wasn't in the pocket. So now no place to put Jay Bruce in a one nothing game bases are loaded double play still in order. Bruce also having some physical issues he's got a plantar fasciitis problem in his left foot. So if you can get the ball on the ground you might be able to double him up. But you got to throw strikes and Biddle has not done that in this inning. 18 pitches 13 out of the strike zone. This is where you think positive thoughts and remind yourself a ground ball back to me and it all goes away. Line drive toward the gap in left center field. That's going to get down. That's going to bounce over the wall for a double. And the Mets take the lead. So a double play ball that wasn't. A walk to a left hand hitter, a double to a left hand hitter, and the Mets have their first lead. It's two to one. Pitch behind in the count. You're going to ask for trouble because you have no place to put anyone. Nice piece of hitting here by Jay Bruce going the other way. I was watching Cabrera, who went from first to third, 
and actually didn't even go to third base. He went by the bag and into foul territory and was really favoring his leg big time. And that's going to be the end of the line for Jesse Biddle. So his struggles continue against left hand hitters here in the sixth inning. And the big story will be what happened to Mike Fulton Evich. Still no word on why he left after 73 pitches in five innings tonight. A J. Bruce double has played at the first two runs for the New York Mets. They now enjoy the lead, and Shane Carl is going to come on and try to clean up this mess. He's got he's got Devin Mezzarocco, the New York catcher, standing in. He was in two games on the road trip: one game in San Diego, one in L.A. Two innings combined, one hit, one walk, one run. Atlanta's infield comes in for Mezzarocco, who picked up the first New York hit an inning ago. And that Ooh. stayed high. He may have ducked that pitch. He starts his stance in a pretty upright, high, hands held high stance, but then really goes into a crouch and appeared to duck that one. Mets have scored 10 runs now in their last 74 innings. Two of them have come tonight against Jesse Biddle, and now New York is in front. The 2 0 pitch is right there, a strike. Yankees lead Washington tonight. That's 3 0 in New York, seventh inning. Here's the Nationals virtually tied atop the pile in the East. That's Tanner Roark and CC Sabathia in the Bronx. The pitch. Strike two call. Mets came to Atlanta after shutting out the Yankees 2 nothing the Yankees were the last team in the major leagues to be blanked this year Seth Lugo and the bullpen but Seth Lugo pitched a great game last night Sunday night I should say big pitch here for Carl here it comes and it missed outside full count last report the Phillies were up on Colorado 4 nothing. John Gray and Aaron Nola looking up in Philadelphia. Don't have to give in here. Got to get him to hit your pitch or walk him. Sharply hit. Camargo. Tagged him out at third. Throw him out at first. What a play. Wow.
That's as good as it gets, folks. There's the tag. There's the peg from his knees. He's kept the lead from growing. That's our Zaxby's indescribably good play. What a heads up play. I don't he, know what was more impressive, the catch and the tag or the laser that he threw falling backwards on one leg. Uh, and that was a hot smash hit to him, too. Freeman unloads on the very first pitch, and we like a little cutter trying to run it in on him didn't get there heads up in the chop house Wheeler gets hit hard on the first pitch Braves score another run on a first pitch and we're tied to a piece in the sixth he got Freeman out earlier in the year on a 990 Nine nine mile an hour fastball earlier in the night up and in that time little cutter Freeman did not miss it looked like he was waiting for it sure did it, it wasn't wasn't in as far as he wanted it to be obviously six games with a hit for Freeman 11 hits four of them homers and Atlanta's back even with Zach Wheeler in the Mets two to two the pitch to Nick is high one ball two strikes. Now a rope to right by Nick. Another multi hit game for the Braves right fielder his 28th. And now 87 hits on the year. This is vintage. Nick Markake is here. Not really thinking about going the other way. Watch him get his hands inside this pitch. Boy, his bat stays in the zone a long time, doesn't it, Paul? It really does. Talking with Nick before the game, 
I asked him what the difference was. And he said, I'm really trying to hit the ball out in front of the plate more this year. I said, how do you do that? He said, I got to get my front foot down. And so my question was, well, why don't you just get your front foot down? Yeah. And he said, Paul, it's a lot easier, you know, to say that than it is to do it. So my question to you, Joe, is how do you do that? How do you practice that? It, it has to be a conscious effort, Paul. There was a guy. That threw very hard when I played. Named Goose Gossage. And if I pinch hit or whatever against him, I had to make a conscious effort not to take my normal stride. When he was in his leg kick and okay. about to throw the ball, I already had taken my stride. It was like a, an early stride, foot down, nothing else left to do now except keep my hands back and try to put the ball in play. 1 1 pitch for Tyler who takes inside 2 and 1. Uh, it's just something you consciously have to think about as you're watching the pitcher. You're ready to throw the ball. You can't wait till he's letting go of it. Can you practice that in BP? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Tyler Flowers singled and scored the first Braves run on Ender's RBI hit. That was back in the fourth. Now we're in the sixth. And a 2 1 pitch. Bouncing ball hit toward the shortstop. Rosario to second for one. The throw to first is in time. Flowers thinks he beat that play at first, and I think the Braves will take a look at this one. Oh, yeah. This one's going to be overturned as Flowers clearly beat the rap at first and he'll be there with one out once New York tells the umpiring crew that they got that one wrong. I think the crowd just told him. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well we saw a good old fashioned ejection. With Mickey Callaway getting yeah. ejected from the game. We don't see that as much anymore. Here's one of the reasons why. Chip, do you like replay? I do now. <laughs> At the moment. Yeah. That one was pretty easy to see. So Eric Cooper with the call at first. That one's overturned. Flowers there with one out. And here's Johan Camargo, whose play at third base is looking enormous right now it's one of the best plays of the year Margo has walked he hit into that double play kind of odd to see a man hit into a double play but still reach base that's because Wheeler turned a one two two five double play with the bases loaded. One ball no strikes. And you know the New York Mets know all about Johan Camargo's ability to hit a line drive homers over the monkey grass in <laughs> right field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my question is did his mom fly back in town from <laughs> yeah. Panama and if not how can we get her here quickly. <laughs> Margo walked off the Mets on May 29th in the bottom of the ninth inning. Charlie Culberson walked him off in game one of the doubleheader on May 28th. That was an exciting series here at SunTrust Park. 2 0 pitch. Beautiful hook. Well, Johan's got a look on his face right now like he knows something the Mets don't. <laughs> you know? Homer's on May 29th and the 30th for Johan, who was a little late. And two balls, two strikes. That's the old fish eye. Uh -huh. Look down to third <laughs> base, see if I can drop one down, but not being too. Conspicuous about it. Now it's two and two. 
Line over second. That's down for a hit. Bruce will cut it off. Flowers around second. He's going to try for third. The throw is going to be in time. Tried the old hook slide here. Tag was on the belt. No argument. Ball beat him. And yeah. they got him. Yeah, they did. I wasn't sure if Tyler was sure he was going to go to third until he actually got around second a little bit, a little bit, because Bruce had to field that ball fairly deep. But Bruce, Jay Bruce got a really good arm. So it's a single. Camargo takes second on the throw to third. Flowers out nine to five. Braves have said from day one of spring training they will run the bases aggressively. Mm -hmm. Flowers made Bruce make a great play, and he did. I agree, and it wasn't the first out. It wasn't the last out. So right. he is a catcher, but if you feel you have it and you want to be aggressive, the plays in front of you. I like the aggressiveness. It just didn't work out. It was a close play. Ender has the first Braves RBI tonight. And that one sprayed off the screen foul. It's nothing in two. A Freddie Freeman homer on the first pitch of this sixth inning has tied the game. Zach Wheeler now to make his 90th pitch. He's coming up third in the seventh for the Mets. They do not want to go to their bullpen. They've been torched. The pitch. Looper to the left side. Rosario can't get it. Here comes Cargo. Identical run scoring hits for Ender, and the Braves are back in front. <laughs> oh, I love it. You got a guy that's really scuffling to pick up a couple of huge RBI hits like that. That's liable to put him right back in business. What a great job fighting off this fastball in, not trying to do too much with it, not trying to pull it. Inside out swing, and good things happen when you go the other way. Joe, he's been slumping. These two hits may get him going. May turn into something. So Dave Island is the Mets pitching coach. The bullpen for New York is just now starting to play catch. Wheeler's at 90 pitches. He's given up three runs. He gave back a 2 1 lead here in the sixth inning. Now he's got Charlie Culberson up. Charlie smoked the ball twice. And his good work has earned him the everyday job in left field. It also earns him our Yellowwood brand bringing the lumber honors. Last 10 games, two, a 389. Batting average. He's hit a couple of ropes tonight. 0 for 2. One to right and one right at Frazier at third. And more walk-off home runs than Ted Williams. If wow. you're keeping track. No kidding. Mm -hmm. How about that? With two out runs, such a big part of the Atlanta Braves season to this point. Two of their three runs with two outs today. Both of them off the bat of Ender and Ciarte. And these throws to first are buying time for the bullpen. They're also keeping keeping an eye on Ender who does not have a stolen base since the middle of May. Stuck on 18. Big lead. Not going and Charlie took a strike. I'm surprised he didn't go right there regardless if he gets thrown out it's OK but get into that scoring position two outs. He started then stopped and that pitch was taken low. Yeah and even if he gets thrown out with the pitcher spot on deck Paul. Shane Carl got that double play turned behind him thanks to Camargo. He didn't have to throw many pitches. He could go no. back out there. Anders last stolen base May 15th against the Cubs right here in Atlanta. And he's chased back to first. 
you don't have to steal the base to be successful here. You see Ender leaning, showing a lot of tendencies after the pitch. He's even jarring back and forth, and that makes a pitcher nervous. So it's hard to concentrate on the base runner, knowing there's a really good chance he's going, and then executing your pitch. So it gets the hitter a better pitch to hit. He's going. Pitch high. Mezzarocco's throw is dropped. And Ciarte safely in its second. Stolen base number 19. This wasn't a pitch out. It was a pitch up. Almost the same thing as a pitch out for Mezzarocco, who made a good throw. He just didn't get any help on the other end. Good jump by Ender. They were pitching out. And now the Mets think about pitching around Culberson. Preston Tucker's on deck. The pitcher spot is due after Charlie. Two balls and a strike. Good night for Ender. A couple of huge RBI hits and a stolen base. He needed a night like this. That was start of a great run for him on this homestand and the stretch of home games 12 of the next 14 here at SunTrust. The pitch. Chased it. That was wicked. Two balls, two strikes. As yeah, 94th pitch of the night. Still sharp. Deuce is wild for Charlie the pitch way high. It's a full count earlier tonight. I talked about how in the last 16 games our last 21 games their starters ERA was 2.34 the last 16 games their bullpen is one in 10 with a 663 of their last 16 games 10 losses belong to the bullpen. Payoff pitch. It skipped up there and it's a two out walk. And you're right, Joe, 16 games by their bullpen, 43 earned runs. Accounting for that six and a half ERA. And so after Culberson walks, two are on, two are in, two are out. And Preston Tucker will be announced as the Atlanta pinch hitter, Shane Carl. The recipient of that remarkable double play started by Johan Camargo to end the New York sixth. You see pitching coach Dave Island right there looking down the dugout, getting instructions on what Mickey Calloway wants to do, whether or not to go get a reliever. As a former reliever and starter in the big leagues, I have to tell you, you guys know this, very, very tough when you have a game where you think you're going to win, where your bullpen comes in and doesn't do the job, takes a lot out of you. I think the bullpen is very, very important, not just the setup and closer, but all those guys down there to preserve games where you have the lead. Well, a pinch hit here would be huge for Atlanta, leading by a run. And Tucker turns it loose on the first one, fouls it straight back. Tucker six for 24 as a pinch hitter far and away the most pinch hit appearances by any brave he's knocked in a couple of runs. And he's quickly down a strike to Wheeler. The pitch. Trying to tie him up. I recall Preston had some big hits against the Mets in the early days of the year. Six RBIs on five hits against Mets pitching. And Ender's going to take third as Frazier, good 30 feet off the third base bag, heads up base running. Another steal for Ender. That was heads up because now he can score on a lot of different in a lot of different ways that don't require a hit. That's the delayed steal. He did not go early. The ball was already in the mitt of Mezzarocco before he took off. That was a little hop step. Love it.
So now Tucker in the driver's seat. Two balls and a strike. Runners at the corners. Pitch. Missed inside. Ball three. There's another way a team can beat the shift, guys. Just outrun the third baseman to the bag. By the same time, Frazier could recognize that he was going. He was already going to yeah. be number two in that foot race. He sure was. So what do they throw Tucker here behind in the count? It was off the plate. And Atlanta's got him loaded. And Wheeler might be running out of gas. 101 pitches for Zach. And that is going to be the end of the line. As soon as Mezzarocco caught that pitch, he looked in the dugout. Like, this is it. He's done. And we have the iPhone flashlight tomahawk chop going. Very intimidating. So Gary DeSarcina, the acting manager for ejected Mickey Calloway, will go to his bullpen. Braves have him loaded with two out. in the bullpen has been a big breakdown for the Mets starters bullpen yikes last 11 games 21 walks too and the man they call on to get out of this mess is a man that's been torched of late Paul Seawald has given up six earned runs in his last four relief outings and 10 earned runs in his last 13 and two thirds innings. Six, six walks mixed in there, too. So let's see how patiently Albies is with the bases loaded, two out. Atlanta has the lead and the pitch almost to the backstop. Ball one. I think one of the things with Wheeler that got him in trouble, and he was doing a good job when your team gives you a two run lead, I know, a two to one lead, and I know it's not a lot. You want to go back out there and put a, the hammer down, and he just wasn't able to do that. I think you have to give the Braves hitters credit. They continued to hit fastballs in and make things happen. And he only struck out two guys with that stuff he had tonight. He struck out Freeman in the first. Fulton Evich in the third. That's all I've got him for. That's it. Mm -hmm. and, Some, four, and four walks, which is something the Braves haven't been doing a lot of. Something I learned from Don Sutton sitting in the booth next to us is do not try to get guys out, good hitters, the same way over and over again. And I think Wheeler, without knowing it, fell into a little bit of that tonight. Swing!
absolutely unloads on, and there is your leading vote getter to make the All-Star team at second base. It's not over, but that certainly doesn't hurt your chances. And what a dagger again to the Mets and their bullpen. Huge hit. What a great bat that is. <laughs> six in the sixth for Atlanta. And six of the seven runs charged to Zach Wheeler. As the Braves have broken the game open seven to two. And Swanson the ninth man to hit in the inning. And a strike. The fastball in not working against the Braves here in the sixth. We may need to give that bat a name. Wonder Boy is already taken. Yeah, that's a good point. But we need to come up with something. How about Wonderful? <laughs> the Grand mm, Slam. I like it. Great greens. Is that a cereal? Great extension, great result for Ozzy Albies, who now has 16 homers and has homered in back to back games for the Braves. Looks like his bat, literally and figuratively, is coming back to life. He's up to 40 RBIs in the leadoff in number two spot, too. Joe, you made mention of this before the game. Not only is he good, but he's a very fun player to watch. He looks like he's having a good time. He hustles, the helmet comes off. He likes to pull his hair back so that we all get to see it. <laughs> Glad he's here in Atlanta. Me too. Well, what an inning for Atlanta. Freddie Freeman homered on the first pitch to tie it. And then Ozzie Albies unloads with home run number 16, a grand slam here at SunTrust Park. And the Braves have a big lead. Make sure your favorite Braves are represented on this year's team. Vote at Braves.com. Catch all the excitement of the 89th MLB All-Star Game presented by MasterCard July 17th live on Fox. Three very worthy candidates wearing Braves colors tonight. Ozzie Albies with his second Grand Slam of the season almost a month to the day. Has given the Braves a 7-2 lead. Dominic Smith leads off for New York. He's their seventh place hitter. Ozzie's first slam also came in the sixth inning on May 10th down in Miami. The Braves scored 
seven runs in that sixth inning. One and one for the Met first baseman who lifts one out of play foul. It's a great thing when you get a home run and get to trot around the bases. But when you pick up four RBIs on that one swing, mm -hmm. whoo, yeah. At a crucial time in the game. Yeah. So seven runs on nine hits for the Braves tonight. Smith. Looks at a pitch that looked to be a strike, but not called. Two and two. I think Minter's frustrated by that. Still no word on why Mike Fultanevich left after 73 pitches, five innings, two hits of shutout ball, no walks, six strikeouts. Mike batted in the fifth inning, hit a ground ball to the shortstop, and slowly jogged to first base, but didn't appear to have any kind of physical discomfort. None that we could tell. And then was taken out of the game. Well, and then I saw Chuck Hernandez talking to him on the bench. I believe the other guy was Sal Fasano, and they were talking about arm angle and something mm -hmm. like on a breaking ball, perhaps. So they were talking about pitching. Uh, that maybe you wouldn't normally do with a pitcher mm -hmm. who has something wrong with him. And normally when there's something wrong with you, the trainer is sitting there asking you questions. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that either. Right. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Swing and a miss. Smith was late. And he is the seventh Mets hitter to strike out. Stay tuned for the middle of the seventh. It's the stretch presented by Rooms to Go. Here's Rosario, the Mets shortstop. He's popped out twice. Of our score holds and the Yankees hold on and shut out Washington Atlanta would have a one game lead in the division entering tomorrow's final game of this series will get underway at 12 10 very early start at SunTrust Park this will be heading to the home of the Diamondbacks that's why it necessitates an early game and with that in mind the Braves have issued a parking alert for those coming to the ballpark tomorrow very limited of parking very limited parking available for the game tomorrow as this one's hit to third Camargo with an easy peg the first two outs all parking lots at SunTrust Park will be by permit only and they are requesting that you prepay for your parking or consider taking Uber to the ballpark or if you have to drive there are a few pre-purchase lots available at North Atlanta High School and at the Cumberland Community Church. That notice put out by Caroline Burleson, the new corporate communications manager of the Braves earlier today. So Does that mean you're picking me up early tomorrow morning? I know you're a good teammate. I can walk to work. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Nothing personal. All right. You asked the wrong guy. That's true. Yeah. Joe, are you available? No. <laughs> Two wrong guys up here. But thanks for asking. All right. See you all take that up. Right I, there. I checked with Allie. She's not available either. So 12 10 first pitch. 11 30 Braves live. Then we'll get ready for the Padres and a four game series starting Thursday night. One ball, one strike. Seawall looks at that one sail by one and two. Braves will have their hands full tomorrow. Jacob DeGrom is pitching for the Mets. An 081 ERA in his last nine starts. And Seawall is down swinging. And that takes care of New York in the seventh inning. Great night for Atlanta tonight. A seven run tally as we hit the middle of the seventh and the stretch. The stretch is brought to you by Rooms to Go. Welcome to the stretch and of course we're talking about all star voting since the results were released for the first time earlier today and we champion the cause of Nick Markakis and Freddie Freeman and Ozzie Albies who are all leading at their position 
and tonight they showed us why they're leading at their position. Freddie with a home run. Nick, of course, with yet another multi-hit game, and then Ozzy with the grand slam. Wow, BJ, you can't go year. wrong with these guys. Unbelievable. This kid continues to impress. His second grand slam of the season, by the way. His first against Miami early in May. And man, boy, when he hit that ball drone, it had some sound to it. This kid is exciting, but we can't overlook with Nick Marquez. A couple of hits already tonight. Freddie Freeman goes deep once again. Consistency is Freddie Freeman. That's his name. The 13th there to go ahead and get things started in the sixth inning, and that seemed to light a spark under the East Braves. Freddie, as you know, the face of the franchise, the leader, and when he gets going, everybody follows suit. No question about it. And how about the defense? Camargo makes a great play at third base. Wow. Continues to get better here at SunTrust. And then Nick Marquez came into the game, leading the National League in multi-hit games, has another one tonight, and of course tied for the lead in hits and doubles. The man just continues to rate. Got to get him up to D.C. for the first time. 34 years old, we got to get him there, Jerome. He's doing everything possible to make his mark, and all the fans in Atlanta loves him. And the league shall love what he's doing so far this season. Yeah, Braves country, you're doing a great job on voting. Please continue it. And if you get a chance, pick up Paul Bird, get him arrived to work in the morning before we get you back up to the booth. <laughs> a quick word from our friends at Rooms to Go. Ready for furniture? Go to Rooms to Go and get exactly what you want for any room and style. Go save by the piece or by the room. Go big or go bigger and go home with fast delivery. Rooms to Go. Let's go. Freddie Freeman leads off the home seven for Atlanta. Boy, he let off the sixth with a bang. A home run on the first pitch to tie the game two to two. And then after a couple of two out hits and two out walks, Ozzie Albies hit a grand slam and busted this game open with a six run Atlanta sixth. Now it's a 7 2 game. And up and outside for Freddie. Three balls and a strike. I don't know how you teach plate discipline, but Freddie is just so good, as you see on that last pitch right there. Taking pitches that are not in the heart of the strike zone until he has to. Isn't that what makes him such a special hitter, guys? I mean, we, we've talked about the unpredictable nature of the Atlanta batsmen, one through eight. This is a team that wants to swing the bat, doesn't strike out a lot, swings early in the count. Certainly the poster child for that is Freddie Freeman, but then he can put together a couple of the bats like the one you just saw and mm -hmm. work counts and draw walks. And, and not swing at that ball that's just, like Paul said, just a fraction off the plate. He, um, he obviously has always had great hand-eye coordination, but it wasn't so long ago his eyes weren't all that great. And in the mm -hmm. last year, or so, well, in the off-season, right, he had the laser surgery, and perhaps that has something to do with it. I read Ted Williams' book, The Science of Hitting. As a pitcher, I always love to study my opponents. He had two rules in the book. One, he said, do not ever let anyone change you. Your hitting style is your own. And number two was get a good pitch to hit. And he said that was everything. That could make an average hitter a great hitter if he just picked a location and swung at his pitch. Again, Joe, I don't know how you teach that, but there is really something to that. I think it comes from confidence, Paul, knowing that you can hit with two strikes mm -hmm. even though you didn't get your pitch that you're talking about in the first two deliveries you might still get one and be able to and not be afraid to hit mm -hmm. with two strikes and being confident that you can put it in play and find a hole hit it hard somewhere. I have heard other good hitters also say when they're taking batting practice they're not just taking swings they're practicing their takes. Oh uh, yeah. And I think if you're a young hitter you're 12, 13, 14 years old. You can start that right then. Uh huh. One ball, two strikes from Arcakis and popped out of play down the left field line. Into a crowd announced tonight at 29,892. 
Well, I had a, a coach, a hitting coach, tell me once in a while, or when I was in a real bad rut, you're not seeing the ball. You're already moving and trying to get out there and get the ball before it gets to you. Take a pitch. Mm -hmm. Follow it all the way to the catcher's glove. You know, see it. And then start trying to get your timing back. And trust that your hands will work in time. There's nothing wrong with that. There's the eyes that we're talking about. Some of the best in the game. Mark Akis will tell you that his swing is unconventional. Talking about Freddie Freeman. Mm -hmm. It's not a swing you would teach everybody. It works for him. Great discipline. Fly ball deep right. Bruce takes a peek at the wall and it's off his glove. Freddie on his way to third. He's going to get the green light. And he's going to score without a throw. That big brick wall came up awfully fast on Jay Bruce and he couldn't haul in Marcakis's drive. And Atlanta has a six run lead. Fastball in again. The Mets have really gotten hurt on the inside part of the plate tonight. And I think Marcakis was upset. We were given so much attention to Freeman. He wants <laughs> in on the action. Jay Bruce barely missing that. One of the things it takes that helps to drive in a ton of runs, you got to have good base runners in front of you. Freddie was already standing on the third base side a second when that ball went off Bruce's glove. He was going to try and score from first if it came off and then have to hustle back to first if he caught it. That's a great catch by you. No balls in a strike for Tyler Flowers. Eight runs on 10 Atlanta hits. Seawalt's given up a couple of runs in relief tonight. Take a look at Freddie here. Watching, watching. And I take it back. He was stutter stepping at the back, not all the way around it, but he was ready to go as soon as he saw it come off the glove. Great base running. Tyler takes outside one and two your count. Yankees have won tonight three nothing they beat the Nationals so. Mm -hmm. He's looking good as far as the divisional race is concerned. They'll pick up a game on Washington. The pitch fly ball hit toward left Nimmo retreating still going back and he reaches up and makes a fine catch. At the left field 375 sign. One out. Tyler hit that one on the button. Yeah the Nationals have Adam Eaton back and tonight they got Daniel Murphy back who was scheduled to be the DH at Yankee Stadium. You know what Chip going into the other locker rooms and asking different managers what do you think of the the baby Braves the new Braves one of the consistent replies that I get back is you know they're not going away. And I think that comes with this is not a good month. There's too many good players there's too many good things happening out there for us to believe that this is an anomaly or off to a good start. We don't know what's going to happen at the end of the year but this is a very good team who's not going away. You know why Paul. Oh, there's there's a list of reasons why. But one of them is they have a lot of weapons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have speed. They have power. They have starting pitching. They have some really good arms in the bullpen. But from an offensive standpoint I don't think there's going to be any prolonged slumps. You wouldn't expect it to be because they're all solid a lot of weapons and they can use their speed too to swipe a base and go first to third or first to home. If they need to one one pitch swing and a miss. How about this too? The unconventional nature of the Braves three and four hitters Freddie Freeman and Nick Markakis. Can you think of another lineup that has two left handed hitters that hit left handed pitching better than that combo. You know what they do against righties. You're so right. how consistent mm -hmm. is that for Brian to write in his lineup every night. Pitch 
That smoke toward right center field. Conforto is on the run, and he'll make the catch. Marquez will tag and move to third with two outs. Alex Anthopoulos has joked and stayed humble and said, you know, I haven't really done anything. I just got here. I inherited a team that's very, very good. But what I will say about him is that he has added a few players like a Culberson here, there, a pinch hitter like Tucker, who's come through over and over again and created a really good atmosphere in that clubhouse where it's very fun to be a part of. That needs to be called out. Sure does. Flaherty, too, put him in there. Yes. Mix. What a great pickup that was. Two steal, two hit, two RBI night for Ender, who hits one toward left center. And that will take care of the Braves, who add a seventh inning run. 8 2, heading to the eighth at SunTrust Park. Other team as they went up against Washington. Of course, the Nats and Braves in a virtual tie atop the division. Our Xfinity game break takes us to the Bronx where Tanner Roark hung one and Didi Gregoria said thank you very much. His 12th of the year, the next one, his second homer of the game, a no doubter. Upper deck. Lucky 13. His 13th of the year proved to be lucky for the Braves. The Yankees blanked the Nats tonight by a score of three to nothing, fellas. Thank you, Jerome. Always love seeing highlights that show the Nationals losing. That's <laughs> <laughs> nice to see tonight. Uh, Daniel Murphy did play, went 0 for 4, two strikeouts. Adam Eaton uh, went 1 for 4. And the interesting note Bryce Harper appeared at the plate twice, walked twice, and then came out of the game. Don't know why. We'll wait for the game recap and pass that along. We're still waiting to see if there was a reason why Mike Boltonevich came out of the game here after five innings. No word. Michael Conforto was hit by a pitch in the first inning. He has struck out and bounced out since. An 0 for 19 stretch for Conforto. He's coming to Atlanta after a 3 for 31 run at the plate in New York. And perhaps he, better than anyone else in Mets colors, Personifies the struggles New York has had at home. Conforto hitting 148 at City Field. He's hitting 280 everywhere else. The Mets are 28 and 34. They have 15 wins on the road. They are 13 and 21 at home. And he is struck out by Sam Freeman, who's off to a good start in the eighth inning. Braves pitchers have struck out nine Mets hitters so far. That's a real good sign for Sam against the left-handed hitter. He's been struggling a bit against lefties. 
that was a good pitch on the outside corner. Here's Todd Frazier. He walked in the sixth and scored the first of two New York runs. Swing and a miss. Let's face it, guys. The Mets were thought to be, and I was on their bandwagon as being a real threat to the Nationals in the Eastern Division race at the start of the year. And after the first two weeks, I think everyone thought that is a valid point. They started 11 and 1. Pitching was good, hitting was good, playing great. And as Frazier hits one right into the shift, Ozzie's got it, and the throw to first. I thought, especially after they signed Frazier, they've signed him late. They had a hole at third base. Uh, they brought up the kid to play shortstop Rosario that allowed them to move Cabrera to second and I thought it really solidified their team to go with their pitching. They had a good defensive club. But here's the question. Cespedes can't stay on the field. They've already let go of Adrian Gonzalez. Uh, Jay Bruce isn't hitting in the middle of that three year contract that he was signed. Conforto's not hitting. Cabrera's got bad hamstrings. All of a sudden this team offensively with all due respect has gotten really old and really physically undependable. How does New York overcome that over the final three and a half months? Well, there's another one, Jose Batista, who started off hot when he went over there, but guys like the Dark Knight, who you were hoping, if you're a Mets fan, would have a comeback year. That hasn't happened. There has been some other distractions in New York like that, again, coupled with the guys getting injured, and it's not over by any means but it's been a very quick turn that we didn't anticipate yeah it's uh, bordering on a collapse with all the injuries mm -hmm. they have one ball one strike and so the national conversation about the Mets and certainly the one that's been taking place in the newspaper there newspapers there is do you tear it down and if so would you dare to trade DeGrom or Syndergaard or both of them or do you keep them and build around them because either one of those guys would bring a huge haul of big league and really good upper level minor league talent in return but boy how do you sell that yeah. any anybody would love to have either one of those guys especially DeGrom I can't imagine the Mets even thinking twice about mm -hmm. moving one of them. I would agree with you. There's great pitchers, and then there's Clayton Kershaw, Scherzer, DeGrom. I put him in that category. I think he is, along with Scherzer, one of the best com competitors I've seen on the mound. He doesn't need his best right. stuff. He is a gamer. He is a stopper. He is a true, legitimate number one. It's hard to find those guys. John Smoltz called me today and said, is DeGrom pitching one of those games? I said, yes, tomorrow. He said, Here's a note on him. He's been behind this year three innings. Mm. The 2 2 pitch is low and outside, full count to Nimmo. Now he's been 0 0 a lot, mm -hmm. as we can testify here in Atlanta. He's done that. A lot of no decisions, even though he's pitched brilliantly. He has one outing where he has allowed more than one run. And that was last time against the Yankees. Yeah, on a two run homer, I think. Incredible. 3 2 pitch is rolled over. Freddie Freeman to Sam Freeman. A Freeman to Freeman special. And that takes care of the Mets in the top of the eighth.
8-2 as we head to the bottom of the eighth. And this is not the first time we've seen some exciting offense from the Braves. Back on June 3rd, Charlie Culberson hit that walk-off home run versus the Nats. Brandon McCarthy nicknamed that game Swamberson, these two guys. And we know how much they look alike. But did you guys see that game day cover that they had today? They put their two faces together, and it, they are identical. That is an amazing thing right there, Kelsey. You're right. I think Culberson is just a little bit better looking guy to the left. Do you really? Yeah, just a hair. Well, I know who else you can't ask for a ride to the ballpark tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I live on a farm in Milton. I just may take one of my horses. There you, you know, go. Weave through the back roads. Good call. This is Jacob Rehm. He's on to relieve. Paul Seawall to win an inning of the third with two runs. And before we get too much further, we got word on Mike Fulton Evich. Right triceps issue is what took him out of the game after 73 pitches in five innings. So maybe an elementary question, Paul, but what what does the tricep do? Uh, super, you know, as a pitcher, all of it is important. It really is, but the tricep. Uh, obviously is huge when you go to throw the baseball. It is a big muscle that fires on the back of the arm to give you velocity. Also along with the bicep is a decelerator. So if that gets tight, very good move. I'm not sure why it got tight after he hit. Um, but you know, Biddle was warming up before he hit, which leads me to believe it was tighter before then, and, and maybe he just felt that he could get through the inning. Um, I got a good feel for that, Paul, and that is because the Braves bench doesn't have big numbers. There's not a lot of guys over there to call on. It was still a close game, and he may want to just save a bat rather than mm -hmm. pinch it for Fulty there and let him hit for himself. Yeah, Mike was his own pinch hitter. Yes. Flaherty flies out to left, and Ozzie Albies comes up. He electrified the 29,000 numbered crowd with a grand slam that broke the game open. Atlanta a six run sixth. And Ozzie, as we told you, one of three brave second basemen in Atlanta history with 15 or more homers before the break, now has 16 homers and, as Joe said, 40 RBIs. This is game number 66. This one hit a mile high toward left. And that'll curl out toward Nimmo, who's there. And that retires the side. We go to the ninth inning, all Atlanta.
match live and over 300 hours of coverage. The world's biggest sporting event is just two days away and it's only on Fox and FS1. Luke Jackson will try to finish this one off as we head to the ninth inning. He has not worked uh, in exactly one week. He, came, he got called up, pitched in San Diego, and he had a very good outing. It's funny, it, he struck out the first two guys he faced, then he walked the next two, struck out the next one. He went three total innings and gave up one run. Remember that long home run to Reyes, Ramiel mm -hmm. Reyes? Mm -hmm. But otherwise, he was outstanding. Struck out five in his three innings. One strikeout shy of his career high of six. And he said last year against the Cardinals. So the Braves getting off to a good start on this homestand which features the Mets and then the Padres a brief two game trip up to Toronto then home for Baltimore and the Reds. There's a high fly by Cabrera to right and to the warning track goes by Kekis and there's out number one. At Rooms to Go you can go any way you want. Go style. Go savings. Go today. Here's Jay Bruce. Mets have to be encouraged with Bruce driving in a couple of runs tonight. Bruce since May 1st hitting a buck 95 he had three RBIs. And now up to 17 for the year. This place brings out the best in him. He's now played in 14 games he has three homers. And 12 RBIs in those games. Cincinnati light for Jay yeah, Bruce. Right. Well, he's also in a rut. He hasn't hit a homer, although he came close tonight in his last 93 at bats. That's a lot for him. No balls, two strikes. Choking up a little bit. And trying to poke that one down the line. Foul. Paul, you played in New York. Mm hmm. I can't imagine what it's like for these Mets players their coaches their manager Mickey Calloway during this 17 and what should be 17 and 34 run after the great start what it's going to be like every day being asked and trying to answer the same questions day after day. No you're right on you know I have a theory when you get a lot of people together in the same area in the northeast it leads for. A lot of expectations. I just see that there's people that took their son, took their grandson to the games, and they love their teams. And when you are not playing well, especially if you're a type of player that maybe can be the guy that doesn't hustle as much or something like that, they are all over you. Uh, conversely, if you are doing well and having a great year and you are the go getter little engine that could hustler and your team's having a great year, you'll walk around the mall and you'll have a crowd of people following you. And there's no better place to play than those places. Sure. But for New York, it's the same movie over yes. and over again. I mean, the old Groundhog Day scenario, they get a well pitched game from their starter. They get very little offense. And then when the game is close and they have to go to the bullpen, the bullpen dumps about 50 gallons of gasoline on the fire. Well I, I. I go back to last year or the last two years. And Terry Collins was heavily criticized because the team wasn't living up to expectations. Well just like with Mickey Calloway this year. Mm -hmm. Tons of injuries especially mm -hmm. to their ace starting pitchers. There wasn't any way to cover that up and there's not this year. Kevin Mezzarocco their final hope. And that's the other part of the problem. Where are the young players? Where are the kids in the farm system that can help plug some of these gaps? They've got Rosario, the shortstop. Smith is back. Nimmo. Conforto as this one's hit high in the air toward Culberson and Ender, who streaks over and is going to make the catch. And that's going to end the game. So the Braves continue to add to the Mets' miseries. Atlanta now 8 and 3 head to head against New York. 
With Washington's loss, Atlanta's win puts them in first place all by themselves by a full game. I presume Shane Carl will be the winner. Zach Wheeler will suffer the loss. Grand slam for Ozzie Albies, but maybe, fellas, the biggest play, Camargo's remarkable double play turn at third base. It sure fired everybody up, didn't it? I love defense. So Atlanta wins its 38th game in very exciting fashion. Great way to start the homestand. Braves beat the Mets 8-2, your final score. Plenty to talk about on Braves Live, presented by Xfinity. That's coming up right after this.